My next guest is coming off another big win, this time over Jessica Andrade, UFC Nashville, August 5th. It is Tatiana Suarez, live from the pool right now. Tatiana, how are you? (laughs) I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, but not as good as you, though. Another big win here. Uh, Before we talk about the victory, how did it feel being back at uh, 115 pounds? It's been a few years uh, since you fought in that weight class. I felt amazing. Um, I did, I mean, I dieted really hard. Um, for like, I think it was like maybe whenever I found out that I was going to fight, um, I asked for the fight cause I had wanted to fight Verna. So I asked originally for Verna. They said, yes, they liked the fight. She immediately said yes. So we, we started training and then, uh, I got on my diet and, uh, I was dieting, you know, pretty hard, like making sure that, you know, I'm doing it the correct way. You know what I mean? Not, not cutting tons of weight to go in, you know, the week of to make the weight class. I was going to go in there lean and healthy. And I did just that. And then the weight cut just was super, probably one of the best weight cuts I've ever had. Um, Because I actually hired somebody, my doctor, Andy Gelpin. He's been working with me for years, never has asked me for a penny. Um, uh, When my, when, you know, I was off for so long, he never asked me for anything. He did everything just because he wanted me to get back out there. And, um, you know, um, and now I'm finally able to s- compete again. So it's been really amazing because um, now I could just, you know, um, the cut isn't so crazy. You know what I mean? Before, yeah. I feel like I, I was cutting, you know, I was bigger before, actually, or like lighter before when I used to cut to 115. I was probably the heaviest I've ever been before this one. But um, that's why I dieted. And then that's also why, I mean, because I added more muscle mass, you know. I don't know if you could probably kind of tell from my fight with Nina till this fight that you just seen with me, um, the muscle mass that I put on within the last few years. And that's because I did a lot of rehab for my neck and I did a lot of rehab for my knee because I was, you know, I, I, I had surgery on my knee. So I was forced to make those, um, to gain some muscle. But, you know, I think the, the only thing that it didn't was no disadvantage of anything. It was an advantage because muscle carries more water. So the last day I cut like, you know, five pounds and that was it. Nice. Well, it, I mean, it, you look great in there. And, and again, uh, like like you mentioned it there, people could see you on the scale or in, in the in the cage. You, you look phenomenal. Um, I know I, I know there's a lot of tape on Jessica. You, you know, it's, it's kind of you know obvious what she's going to do in the fight. But was there anything in the fight that maybe you didn't expect from her uh, kind of looking back? Honestly, um, no. I mean, she really couldn't do anything in there against me. And that's mm-hmm. not like to be, um, I'm not trying to be like. Um, oh, we, we know you're not disrespectful. I, I know yeah, what you meant. It's okay. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just say, I'm just thinking like, I thought she would, she would get to me a little bit. Uh, I thought she would hit me at least, you know, hit me at least. And uh, I think she might have hit me, but I don't remember it because like, I don't, I didn't feel it. So I think that's a good thing. You know what I mean? I didn't, she didn't hit me and I go, oh, shit, that was really hard. I'm nervous. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I didn't feel that in there at all. And um, and uh, so that's a good thing because I told myself that my, this fight, I wanted to make sure that I was very, very comfortable on the feet, regardless of whoever I was going to fight. My last fight, I wasn't able to really spar so much, so I didn't have that that level of confidence when I went into the cage, you know? And a lot of people were ma- making comments about my last fight, but I got to finish and I got to finish this fight too. So I'm really excited that I'm finally at my new weight class. I'm back to where I should be and I'm faster and stronger than I, than I ever have been because, you know, I put in the work and I'm very, very disciplined. Does this win mean a little bit more just because it is Andrade? Like she was a contender in the weight class. Nothing against Montana De La Rosa. Total respect to her. But yeah. this was your first fight back at 115. Um, you, you had the, you know, like like you said, the layoff there. Uh, you came back at 25 and you beat Andrade. And this, I mean, this reminded me a bit of the Carlos Esparza fight in the sense that like it kind of woke the division up being like, hey, we got another title challenger here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, I showed a lot of skills in there. I think um, for me, you know, I used my range so well. Um, I used my footwork really well, and that's why she wasn't able to get to me. A lot of times she did throw flurries, but I just wasn't there to accept them. And yeah. that's a, t- a testament to my, my footwork and a testament to, um, 
you know, my, my, my level of knowing the range where I should not be getting, you know what I mean? My range. And then, um, also being very patient and picking my wrestling wisely, you know, um, when she did throw a hook, I shot in on her. That was the first hook that, uh, that she threw at me and I was able to get in and, um, take her down. And, um, then I was able to do, you know, some knees and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I think that this fight is definitely a lot more awakening for the division. They know that I'm back. Maybe they were very hopeful after my last fight with Montana. Like, oh, you know, does she have the level of wrestling, blah, 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 this and that, or whatever it may be. And I didn't show really many of my skills on my feet um, in my fight with the Montana Bill Rosa because I was so, like, busy clinching. But my fight with Montana, I had different goals in mind. My, my goal with Montana was um, to be very patient in the clinch, which I did that. I was very patient in the clinch. Like when I had her against the cage, I tried to throw some knees. Um, I try to do things like that, things that I usually don't do in my fight. If you watch all my fights, I'm very, very, um, once I get to the leg, I try to take down right away. I don't really throw knees against the cage. I don't really hold people in position against the cage. I usually go and I take them down right away off of the cage. And my goal for Montana was to be patient in the clinch. And I did that again in this fight. I was very patient in the clinch. I threw some knees against um, Jessica Andrade to her body, to her face, stuff like that, things that I had practiced in my last fight. People don't realize that everything I do is very intentional, and um, it, it's so that I can get more cage time, so that I can great, gain more experience in there. Um, every time I walk in there, I'm learning a new lesson about me and my, about my, my, my uh, work, and I think that when the time is, when it, my time comes i'll be ready to get that belt um how did you celebrate after the win because uh you're in nashville it's like one of the best places like if you like food or anything it's it's, it's pretty awesome did you get to enjoy yourself that night yeah you know what the, the biggest thing about this fight and the most amazing thing about this fight was i was finally in front of fans again that's right i was, yeah. not, I was not in front of fans against montana and also um i think that gives me energy i do i think it gives me energy i think some some people may feel like a little more um, nerves because of it. Like, oh, man, look at all these people. They're going to watch me. I could lose, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what they think. But me, it gives me a lot of energy. And I think the higher, you know, the brighter the lights, the brighter I shine. And, um, you know, I think for me, um, this was so important to me because my family was able to come. And my family has not been able to see me fight live in over four years. Uh, or four years or whatever it may be. I don't know how long it's been now. But I'm just really grateful because, you know, my family deserves that. My family is um, so supportive of everything I've ever done in my life. And they're um, constantly there for me, whether it's emotionally um, and, you know, physically, because they'll be there, you know, they'll be there for me. Um, the, they went to Nashville, all of them. My uncle, my brother, her, my niece was finally able to see me fight live. Um, my sister, my other, my, my little brother, um, you know, my grandma, my, my, my other uncle, you know, I was just, I'm really, really blessed to have such a supportive family. And, um, I'm really happy that they were able to finally see that life. And you got a bonus for, for the victory. I, well-deserved, I should say too, because again, that was an impressive finish. Uh, what are you going to be doing with the money? Um, you know, just saving it, investing, you know. I always um, buy myself something, one thing that's like big. So maybe like I'll buy some cool shoes or something. But other go. than that, you know, um, I'm going to save it, invest it, you know. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm just really excited because uh, I've actually already just like watching videos of like the people that I could fight next, you know, because I'm really excited to get back out there. You know, this is the first time in a long time that I'm healthy. And I feel very blessed for that because um, now I can finally show the world what I've known for a very, very long time. You know what I mean? And so I'm, I'm just really happy about it. No, oh, it's so great to see that it all's, it's all worked out. And this is a big win, like you said. So, so what is next? Because again, I think a lot of people feel like that performance should get you a title shot. We have the title fight next week. There's also Jan Shonan out there. She's coming off a big win. Has UFC given you any indication of what could be next for you? No, they haven't said anything. Um, but, you know, I don't see why that we wouldn't fight Yan Shanan or I wouldn't see why I wouldn't fight the winner of Lemos or, or um, Jean Willy. I know that Yan did um, 
get an impressive win over um, Jessica Andrade as well. So I think she's in that picture. Um, I think she's number three. I'm number four, you know. So, um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm not like, you know. I'm not. That's not my job. My job is just to get better. So yeah. I. But I know that it's, you're doing your job by asking me that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I'm curious to see how it unfolds because there's a lot of good options. I mean, the strawweight division is really exciting, and actually, with Rose kind of moving up here, it kind of opens things up a little bit in terms of um, uh, possible matchups. So I think, regardless, you know, Corey Sanhagen said this to me when we inter- when we did our interview. He's like, "Look, I'm gonna have to fight these fighters anyway. So whether I fight them for a title or not, and I know you kind of have always had the same mentality where it's like, yep. I, I, I got to fight everyone, so might as well fight them, you know, whenever, right? So yeah, yeah, and I think I match up well, very, very well against all of them. And, um, you know, I think they're underestimating, you know, um, a lot of things. Like, I don't think, I don't think, you know, that Jessica Andrade, that she thought, I honestly think she thought she was going to go and bully me. Like, I think she thought I was going to be scared of getting hit because people think that I'm scared to get hit. No, I'm not scared to get hit. I know that I just shouldn't get hit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, there's a for difference. Sure. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and so for me, um, I think that, you know, a lot of these girls, they're not going to, they don't understand what it's like to be in there with, you know, um, with someone in terms of, you know, the physic, my physicality, how intense I am. Um, I'm very relentless and I make people tired for a lot of reasons, you know. Um, like if you notice off the break on one of my breaks with uh, Andrade, I literally, we broke on one of the thing, you know, we broke off and I literally walked forward like as if I was walking to the store and then delivered a push kick. Like it's like things like that that or make a difference in the fight. You know what I mean? The, she probably thought, oh yeah, I feel I feel good. You know, I got out of the takedown and then all of a sudden I'm push kicking into her stom- stomach. You know what I mean? Those are uh, those are some things that are like that change a fight. You know what I mean? Things that I'm keeping in my head. Like oh I'm gonna put because she was putting pressure on me, but I'm also gonna put pressure on her too. You know. So um, yeah, I definitely think that I did a good job picking my shots in there. Um, I probably kicked a little bit too recklessly because my foot was a little weird after, but I don't know. I've made that in my mind. I made up. A, I made that up in my mind before I went in there. I told my coach, I was like, I'm just gonna kick her hard, <laughs> and yeah. he was like, For sure, I know you will. <laughs> He's like, <Yeah. laughs> He knows me. <laughs> um. If the UFC came to you right now and they said, "When do you want to fight next?" Like, ideally, when would you like to have that next fight? You know, I don't, I don't care. You know what I mean? I just, I know that they're not going to be like, "You're fighting in two weeks." You know, I just know they're not right. going to do that, especially because of how um, where I am in the division. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I just know that it'll be. They'll give me a good amount of time because they always do that. They don't do like, you know, two weeks things kind of unless you're already at a camp. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, so I just I hope that within the year, to be honest, I mean, that would be my most probably maybe my most fights in a year. That's really, really exciting to me. Um, I really wish that they would let me do, you know, both divisions. I know that I had asked Mick for a fight at 125 before this. And he was like, you know, you got to pick one, you know, one or the other. And I understand it makes it really exciting for the fans like, man, she got another win at 115. But I think it also makes it exciting, too, when I go up a division and do well there, too, you know, and yeah. um, put myself out there, gain more experience, because there's not a lot of girls at 115. And once you get to the top, it's kind of like, OK. And, you know, Aunt Josh has a number next to her name. She's number five and number five at both weight classes. Why can't I do that? Yeah. You well, know? hey, hey, you know, Ed, you go get a belt and then maybe you got more options, right? Usually that holds a little bit more weight. Look at like Volkanovsky and, you know, some of these other fighters that have been able to move up, right? So, yeah, but it's uh, more to me like I just really want to fight all the best girls and like. Absolutely. You know, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I'm thinking like if I do that at both weight divisions, that's me doing what I want to do in terms of like beating people at the highest level up to weight classes. I think that that's impressive. And I wish they would let me do it, but they just, they're like, no, you got to pick a weight class. And I'm like, okay, I guess that's long 15. Cause you know, I know that that's where I belong. I, I'm just so fast and like, um, so fast and just like really, uh, that's where I belong in terms of that. Like I am very, a lot faster there, you know? So I felt really good. So. 
title fight next week between Wei Li Zhang and Amanda Lemos. Who do you think wins that? It's a really interesting matchup. You know, at first I thought Lemos, but you know what? I'm not underestimating Wiley. She has great footwork. I watched Lemos again, and then I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I think it's going to be a lot, maybe maybe a lot closer than I thought. I know that Lemos has power, but Wei has Wei has really good footwork, really good movement. So I'm hoping that you know Wei Li just puts everything together, and I think she will. You know, I think she will. I think she'll try to do some jujitsu. But I don't know. This girl does have a really good. Um, I mean, I haven't seen much of her jujitsu. I mean, she stands up a lot. I'm talking about Lemos. I haven't seen much of her jujitsu. I gotta watch up more of her fights. But I know that she got that beautiful uh, guillotine against Michelle Watterson, um, and. Uh, and that's about it that I've seen in terms of like submission game. And then I saw her get submitted by Andraj, which I felt that's that right. interesting. Um, Cause I just couldn't imagine getting submitted by Andraj, no offense. But yeah. like when I saw, when I was matched up with her, I didn't think, Oh, Andraj is going to submit me. Right. Yeah. Like, that I'm not really known for that. She's more of a knockout artist. Yeah, to be honest. exactly. Like she gets the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but she does. I mean, don't get me wrong. She has submissions on her resume. Yeah. Like, I think she has, like, nine. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. I'd have to look up the stats. But yeah. you're, you're right. I mean, that's what makes her dangerous. She's so well-rounded, right? Um, yeah. She's got 33% of her wins by submission, 38% by knockout. So it's actually quite even if you look at yeah. it there. So. I mean, that's 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 really impressive. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, they mentioned it prior. You know, they said she has, like, I think she, that was her 25th fight, I guess. But yeah. not only that, but she, overall, she had 36, I think, fights. And, um, you know, that's a lot more than me. And I know they had pointed it out in the press conference. And I just expressed that, well, I can't, you know, control how many fights I have in there. But I can control the type of fighter that goes in there. And, you know, I trained for that. And that's, that's what I went in there. And, I, you know, I have a lot of experience in wrestling, too. Like, being under the lights and being under pressure and stuff like that. So I think people forget about that, too. Like, I have that experience. I did started doing that when I was, like, 15 years old, where I was, like, competing internationally against the best women in the world in wrestling. So I have that type of, like, pressure that I've, that I've had on me and um, to perform, you know, that I think a lot of people just don't have. Um, and that's what makes, I think, Valentina really special, too, because she's also competed in the kickboxing prior, you know what I mean? Also, uh, Joanna, you know, she just she's not scared out there, you know? So, I mean, you could see it. I mean, their work shows, shows that, you know, um, you mentioned Wei Li Zhang probably getting the nod next week over Lemos. If you were to fight Wei Li stylistically, how do you look at that fight? Cause she's never really fought anyone like you before. Yeah. I mean, I guess the closest thing she has fought is maybe Carla. And, um, you know, I saw some things, you know, and then, um, not only that, but, Rose, you know, kind of out. I mean, not kind of. She out grappled her, you yeah. know. I mean, that's not um, unknown. And I think she knows that. I mean, she sees me at the PI, and I think that's probably going through her head. Like, you know, this girl's a good wrestler. She actually asked me when I started wrestling. And I was like three years old, you know. <laughs> and um, so it's like um, I know that, you know, that's in her mind. After, probably after this, you know, that's going to be in her mind. She's probably going to watch me every single time she goes into the sauna because I see that she does that now. And I'm like, it's okay. I'll watch you in the sauna while you watch me in the sauna. Okay. How much can you really <laughs> learn in the sauna though, if we're, if we're being honest here, but uh, Hey, I, maybe it's a mental thing, like kind of getting your head. I don't know. It's not mental. No, I just <laughs> noticed that she does it. And I just found it funny because okay. of like, I see that she watches like her opponents every time. And I'm like, it can't be like, um, coincidental. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like she's just like, She's just watching. She like times time. everything to like where like she knows your schedule and everything. That'd be no, no. I yeah. mean, like I think that that's she just obsesses over it. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Not that she cares where I'm at in the world. So she's like, oh, Tatiana's coming. Put the fight on. I just think she's obsessing over her her fight, which I don't blame her. I do the same thing. You know what I mean? She's she's focused, and yeah. um, that's why she's the champion. You know, she's focused and she's she's trying to you know, figure out where she can excel. You know what I mean? So I love that about her. I love that. You know, we've had, um, I actually respect her a lot. Like, see, she's a great person. 
and I could tell she's very genuine. So there you go. Um, but how would a fight play out between you two? Do you think you could finish Whaley if you were to fight her? Yeah, I do think that. I think I can finish anybody in the world. I think that my, you know, um, my jujitsu is just really, really good. I think it's yeah. really, really good. And I think, um, you know, everybody call me the female Khabib. Um, but I, th <laughs> I think I'm more like my boyfriend in terms of that. You know, he's like has like mad submissions. You know, mm -hmm. I think they should compare me to him. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, by the way, is there a bigger power couple in MMA right now than you and Patchy Mix? Like one of the best bantamweights in the world. You're one of the best strawweights slash flyweights in the world. Um, that's got to be cool for you. Just like having someone that's in your life. That's such a high level fighter that, you know, you happen to also date. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, we have like this, uh, we have the never ending talks about MMA, everything MMA. I mean, even if it's not just us, you know, it's about MMA in general. And uh, our, our passion for it is I didn't think anybody loved it more than me. And then I met him and I'm like, wow, he's just as obsessed with it as I am. And he's just as obsessed with being better than uh, than, than everybody else um, as I am. Like he's, I mean, working, you know, sometimes he'll go to extreme and then he'll get done and he'll literally go to the PI like directly after that and go do a session there just because, you know, the best guys in the world are, are there and he's like, I want to be there too because he's the best in the world. You know what I mean? And uh, and I'm saying the best in the, the best in the world in like another organization. You know, he's in Bellator, so like, you know what I mean? He's uh, the best in that division. But I truly believe that he's the best in the world in both of them. I shouldn't say yeah. that, but because I'm in the UFC, but I just know his talent. And I know that he's. I don't think there'll be people who disagree with you, honestly. Like the yeah. performances he's had have, have been, you know, they sort of speak for itself. Okay, I got to know this. I haven't asked you this before. How did you two start dating? Did he ask you out? Like, tell me that. Cause, like, I'm always curious about how, like, couples get together. Everyone's got a different story. I bought him a hot dog and then he was like, fell in love. No, I'm just kidding. It was, he, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the reason why I say that was because we were at High Rollers and he saw me there and. Um, he, we had met before, but we were at more in like the, we were at the PI and he didn't ask me out there, but then he saw me at high rollers and a jiu jitsu event. And, um, he asked me out there, well, he tried, he asked me if he, he could buy me a hot dog. And I was like, I don't, I don't, wow, I, what like, a no, I already had bought it. So it didn't matter, but I was like, no, I'm good. And then, uh, yeah, the rest was from there. I mean, yeah, yeah. it was kind of weird. Cause like he was, um, fighting James Gallagher actually. And we started talking around then. And um, yeah, it was really cool because we, he literally talked to me the entire fight week. We just kind of got to know each other that way, you know? So very cool. Yeah. Do you feel like in some ways that you, you're both your games have been elevated from being together just cause I imagine with that, like you said, you haven't met anyone before that's had that same mentality, the work ethic, all that, like how much has it lifted both of you up? Cause we've seen, it's no coincidence. I don't think that, I mean, he's been on quite the role lately. And then obviously you're coming up a couple nice wins. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I think it's just cause we're both so focused. I mean, I think a lot of people will be like, you know, they'll go to practice and then they'll be like, Oh man, my wife's at home waiting for me or, you know, whatever it may be. He doesn't have me waiting for him. I'm there with him. So he's like, oh, he could put in the extra work without having to worry about feel guilty wife. about not spending time and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Um, so he could just focus on his craft and, and I could focus on my craft and we could focus on them together and we could spin ideas off of each other. And not only that, but we have, um, like the mentality, you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people don't have that championship mentality uh, or believe in themselves. And we both believe in each other just as much as we believe in ourselves. So that's, I think that's a plus, you know what I mean? Like he's sitting there telling me before my fight, how great I am and not, and not to forget that how great I am, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I'm doing the same for him right before his fights. So I think we, we definitely uh, elevate each other in that sense. You mentioned Valentina Shevchenko earlier. She's fighting Alexa Grasso, the champ. You fought Grasso. Um, how do you see that fight playing out? Because that was a really interesting first fight, uh, which I thought was very competitive leading up to the finish. Yeah, it was a competitive fight. Um, I did think that Valentina was winning. Um, I'm not sure you could... I'm, I don't know about the scorecards, but I think that she was. And um, I think that Valentina might be able to get their belt back, you know? Um We'll see. But I know that Grasso is probably going to make adjustments, too. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? 
I think that maybe she saw that gap in terms of the back and maybe she'll still expose her back, but in a different way. You know yeah. what I mean? Maybe she's going to work on her wrestling and try to get to her back on her own. Because of the fight, Alexa didn't even try to push the wrestling. Mm-hmm. If anything, she was on the defensive end of that. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, you know, Valentina was the one being offensive in the wrestling department. And I think that Grasso should have seen that prior. Maybe she'll see it now like, oh, you know, I can grapple with this girl. You know what I mean? Because she got her neck last time. And that's what I saw, you know what I mean, when I watched Valentina, that I could get her neck or I could get her in a guillotine or I could get her in any type of submission. So, um, but yeah, I think that, you know, we'll see a good fight. I don't know. I don't have, I'm not picking any of them. I just know that it's going to be a great fight and I can't wait for it. When is that? September what? September uh, 16th. That's right. So. Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to actually, I have to reschedule some stuff, I think. There you go. <laughs> okay, one other fight I wanted to ask you about, uh, just just you know, if you want to give me your take on it, is uh, the rematch between Islam Mahashev and Charles Oliveira. Um, who who do you see coming out on top in the rematch? Um, you know, I think I'm gonna go with Islam again. You know, I think that you know he's. I mean, they're both so great. I mean, I mean Charles Oliveira. Look at all the submissions that guy has. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, very very impressive resume. Um, but I just think that Islam's going to get it done. I just hope that maybe he, uh, um, not hope that I, I'm just hoping that maybe like the rehydration process is a little better. He looked a little bit drained in his last fight, yeah. you know, like I think he could have done a little bit better in there. Um, not that he did horrible, but I just think where some, where he like, when he started to get tired, it just, you know what I mean? It just like favored Volkanovski a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Volkanovski was able to do some stuff, you know, as opposed to, like, if he had it fatigued a little bit, he might have, you know what I mean, done a lot better in the, in the fight, you know. But I do, did see some fatigue in there, and I think he is a big lightweight, so that could be why. <laughs> yeah, could, could be. Uh, well, what do you, you mentioned it earlier, do you like being called the female Habib? Do you like that? Um, obviously it's not a disrespectful thing. <laughs> no, no, I just the mean the comparison. Some fighters don't like that. Right. But, um, I mean, it's very complimentary. He'll be just one of the best fighters of all time. Yeah, no, I'm very, I mean, I'm humble in the sense where if they want to call me that, I don't mind that. You know I mean? I think the guy is amazing. Obviously he's retired, undefeated, um, a, a world champion and he's was a dominant champion, you know? So, uh, I don't think that there's anything that they really could uh, call me that would be any better except for what I, what I told you earlier you know call me the female patchy bix <laughs> there you go there you go for sure okay before we go again i know i'm cutting into the pool time what do you have planned for the rest of the week you got uh got anything planned any nice dinners or i know you're always training but you got to enjoy the victory a little bit i'm assuming yeah so i think i'm just gonna um the rest of the week i'm just gonna well i gotta get my foot fixed a little bit i'm gonna work out definitely work out i already did my dinner I, I mean, I spent time with my family. That was really uh, meant a lot to me. The night of my fight, we went to just like this alley and I got some tacos. Uh, I wouldn't say that Nashville is known for their tacos. so. But that was the only thing open at like 12 o'clock at night. So we're good. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, California is known for their tacos. Texas is known for their tacos. Right. I don't think Nashville is so much. <laughs> yeah. I think they're known for their really good chicken. I went to this biscuit place the day after as well. Or no, the day of my fight, I didn't eat any of the gravy or nothing because I didn't want to get sick. But um, it was it was a good good spot. Um, and then this week I'm just gonna work out, and then we're gonna go to Buffalo because my boyfriend needs to see his family. Oh, you know, cool. he he was away, Patchy. Uh, he was away for a while. He he stayed for my camp, so he wasn't able to see his family. You know, he only saw them maybe one time in like the eight weeks that I was in camp. So. I think is, this your first, is this your first time going to Buffalo to see his family? No, no, no. Okay. no. I was going to say, because that's uh, like a big deal, right? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know who I am. <laughs> well, that, that's good. No, I'm sure they know who you are, but, you know, meeting the family for the first time, that's always a Oh, yeah, thing, I've right? met them, yeah. No, I've met them multiple times. <laughs> they go. were going to come to my fight, but, you know, it's, it's a little bit hard. It's, it's harder for everybody to get there, you know? Yeah. His dad, his dad came, though. 
Cool. Well, there you go. Got the whole yeah. family support. Tatiana, thanks for doing this. We went way over time. Uh, like I said, I was cutting into pool time. I know how important that is. If there's anyone you want to thank, if there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll uh, give you the last word. Um, uh, just uh, thank you to all my sponsors, which is one Celsius right now. <laughs> Hopefully that changes here soon enough. And um, yeah. And uh, thank you for every, uh, thank you to all the fans that are always supporting me um, through the, you know, the highs and the lows. I know I was out for a while and a lot of people still messaged me and said, you know, keep your head up. I can't wait for you to come back. I can't wait for you to fight. I really thank those people, you know, because, uh, man, it was tough when I was out and it wasn't, it was like a long road, you know, I mean, three, three, year, three and a half years, that's a long time to keep, uh, to keep your mind right, you know especially when uh, everything else is moving, people are winning, you're just kind of on the sidelines watching, you know. But I'm back, so here we go. (laughs) 